Okay, so as I'm recording this, the OpenAI Dev Day keynote has just finished. And there were basically four main themes that they announced in this keynote. And in this video, I'm going to go through those four things briefly. And then perhaps in a future video, I'll look at one or two of the things more in depth. So the four things that they announced were basically apps inside of ChatGPT, building agents with a whole new system that they're calling Agent Kit, writing code or basically improvements to their Codex product, and finally some model and API updates. So jumping into the first thing that they announced was this whole idea of the apps SDK or apps inside of ChatGPT. So we've seen them do this a couple of times. They've kind of tried to create different sorts of plugins for ChatGPT, et cetera. This seems to be like the new updated version of this. I'm still not totally convinced of how this is going to work. And the big factor for me around this kind of thing is discovery is that if you go and build one of these apps, how are you going to make it actually show up when you're competing against OpenAI partners like Canva, like Expedia, like uh, Zillow, et cetera. So the challenge that you're going to have here is that any sort of product that you make where they have a big partner already is going to be very challenging when people use generic searches to actually find the product or find what your app can do. So it is interesting that they're releasing a apps SDK. It's going to be in preview as of today. And then it looks like their sort of whole store or this sort of app store inside of ChatGPT is going to roll out later on. Now they gave some nice examples of where you could do things to use these apps. So for example, if you've got a, an outline and you want to turn it into a deck, you can use the Canva app to do that. I'm not sure how it's going to connect and what it, will it actually be able to do if you're not a Canva subscriber to something like this. Another example that they showed, which was quite nice, was the whole idea of Coursera, where you can be watching a course inside of ChatGPT and then actually chat with the video that's going on. So that's a nice feature that we haven't seen used that much in other places, but certainly makes a lot of sense for this kind of thing. All right, the second main thing that they announced was Agent Kit. And this is basically a whole bunch of tools for building, deploying, optimizing agents. And so here it seems to me that they've kind of realized that tools like NAN are doing really well. Google's jumped on the bandwagon with Opal. We've seen a number of different companies do things like this. But this is OpenAI's version of this. So Basically, they've got Agent Builder, which is a visual canvas for creating agents. They've got this sort of connector registry for how to actually connect things up across OpenAI and perhaps later on across third-party providers as well. And then finally, they've got Chat Kit. Now, this one I also thought was kind of interesting in that this is basically helping developers to make a pretty good sort of chat app out of the box. Now, we've seen things like AGUI and some other tools where people have been trying to design a standard uh, interface for chat apps. It does seem that OpenAI perhaps is not jumping on board with that, but going their own direction for doing this. Now, my only issue here is that nowadays I feel when you build a chat app, you probably want to support multiple models. So I'm not sure out of the box whether this is going to support anything except OpenAI models in here. Now, the big part of this announcement, and probably what I think is going to be the sort of coolest thing out of what they announced today, is this Agent Builder. And so basically, Agent Builder is this drag and drop UI interface where you can easily put together agent workflows and then have them be able to do different things. Now, most of the examples that they showed here were more workflow apps than agents. Although from what I've seen, it, it does look like this can build full on recursive agents and things like that as well. Now, it does seem one of the use cases for this is that lots of organizations want to build their own agents, but perhaps they don't have a sort of AI engineer dev team to be able to do this, or they're struggling with things like the various agents SDKs that are out there. And what this basically does is allow people to put something together reasonably quickly that can build an agentic experience that then they can perhaps share internally. And so they had some nice examples of this. Sam Altman talked on stage about a chain of supermarkets that have used this to build 
an app. And then you can see here that they've also showing a bunch of different apps that people have actually built with this for their internal organizations. So it does seem to me that this whole idea here is at least starting out as more sort of a way that people can build agents for themselves to use. Now, there was no talk of anything being able to connect via A to A to other agents or being able to even work in multi-agent systems. Though it does seem that this connector registry that they talk about is going to allow you to use pre-made connectors for third-party stuff, as well as MCPs in here. So this certainly does look interesting. And I think I'll circle back on actually trying to put something like this together. Along with Agent Kit, they also released some new stuff around guardrails in relation to agents and some new stuff around evils on agents. Although they didn't show this on stage, it certainly looks interesting uh, that they realize that people are running into lots of problems around evils and that they need to find some way to simplify that for users that perhaps haven't experienced this kind of thing before. The third main announcement that they had was around Codex being generally available. And it does seem that Codex is getting some traction against things like Cord Code, and perhaps even to a lesser extent, Gemini CLI. They talk about the daily usage of Codex growing 10X since early August, but there were no actual numbers of how many users or how many messages a day. Interestingly, they talk about that in the first three weeks, they served over 40 trillion tokens. And while they announced things like Codex in Slack and some new admin tools and stuff coming, it did seem to me that this part of the presentation was more just flagging that, hey, we know you like this product, we're going to put more effort into actually making this than really any huge announcements today. They did have a nice demo of showing it in action and trying to encourage people to perhaps use this with voice. The last main updates were around API updates, and this mostly was around Sora 2 coming as an API. And it looks like that's going to have a bunch of nice things of where you can set the aspect ratio, where you can set the video length, where you can inject images as context, etc., for this kind of generation. And while they didn't talk about it at the keynote, looking at the pricing for the Sora 2 video API, this is actually quite encouraging that this is 10 cents per second for the basic Sora and then 30 cents or 50 cents per second for Sora 2 Pro based on what resolution that you actually want to have. So I got to think that's going to drive down the prices of some of the other video APIs that are out there. Now, I'm hoping that also includes the audio and the video there. The other new API that they announced, which I thought was really interesting, was a new GPT real-time mini. And they talked about this being 70% cheaper than what's already out there. And we can see, sure enough, like looking at this is a lot cheaper for both audio going in and audio coming out of this. And so that combined with also the images in getting quite a lot cheaper in here, I really sets things up for making these real time voice apps that are using a model that can do function calling and stuff like that on the back end, much more of an attractive offer now. So overall, this was a much more polished and very solid presentation compared to the GPT-5 launch. There's certainly a lot of effort gone into the actual way that they rolled out these four things. And my guess is that we're going to find out a lot more details from the other sessions that will probably get released over time for these particular products. Anyway, as always, let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. Are you interested in using a drag and drop agent builder? Does the fact that the, now the real time API is actually getting a lot cheaper suddenly make it a lot more attractive? Let me know in the comments below. If you found the video useful, please click like and subscribe and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.